Parshas Eschanan. We are just coming out of Tisha B'Av. We're coming now to Shabbos Nachamu, when God Almighty is promising us that He's going to let go all the things in the past where we got distracted from God Almighty. We have Moses, our teacher, Meisha Beno, telling us with great, great enthusiasm and 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 begging us compassionately, loving us and telling us, please, please don't forget God Almighty. I've spent all this time taking you out of Egypt to connect you to God Almighty. And and don't don't forget about it. Don't forget about God Almighty. You're going to have all kinds of trials and tribulations as you go through this journey in life. But don't forget about God Almighty. This is a ple- passionate, loving pleading from Mo- Moses, our teacher, and, and gives us strength. His encouragement, I encourage every person to read through the verses of Parshas Eschonon in every language that you understand. And we have to make sure that we don't make our clever thinking our higher power. God Almighty is the only God. He's our only power. That's what Parshas of Eschonon is coming to say. We lose out if we try to use our clever thinking to justify, do, to justify doing what other people are doing. When we try to say, oh, well, since the world is going in that direction, we're going to use our clever thinking to figure out ways to say that this is allowed according to the Torah so that we don't look different than the rest of the world. And the world is going to think that we've got all these great rationales and it's such a falsehood, it's such a mistake. We have to strengthen ourselves to understand this. Now, I just want to mention, I appreciate everyone who's becoming subscribers. You know, my dear friends, I want to encourage you to share this important message, the messages of our channel, Hope for Humanity, and for the, the learning that we're doing here. And we want to make sure that this spreads to as many people as possible. We want to make sure that every person is able to re- understand this message, that there's nothing besides God Almighty. And we want to encourage you, I want to encourage you to please subscribe below, sign up at rabbismith.org, and at least share this video with one other person, family member, or friend, and to help them make sure that they stay on track and can encourage every other human being to stay on track, provide hope for every single human being. And when we see how Moses, our teacher, is investing himself, we want to, I want to spend a few minutes to go through, uh, as they say, chapter and verse. Let's just spend a minute here tonight we're going to go through a few chapter and verses. I'm just going to highlight them because I want to draw your attention to them. We're going to make this as brief as possible because I'm going to put the homework on you to open up your Chumash, your Torah, and to look inside and to learn it in the original with an English translation, Spanish translation, Greek, Roman, uh, Latin, whatever it is your translation is, uh, Russian, Brazilian, and to look at Rashi also and to understand the simple meaning of the verses because Rashi is here to tell us to make sure we stay on track with the simple meaning. Like I said, Rashi is trying to keep us out of getting too clever. Clever discussions have their place, but in terms of practical everyday reality and being able to navigate this world and stay on track with God Almighty, the only way is through learning the simple meaning of the verses, staying connected to the simple meaning of the verses, and Rashi is here to be our guide to stay connected to the simple meaning of the verses. So let's start with chapter 4, verse 4. Um, Moses is, is reminding us over here that the ones who, when he says, you are the ones still cleaving into God Almighty, you're the ones that are still alive. That's the people who turn down the idolatry and turn down the seduction of the culture around them and the seductive techniques to try to get them to go after the idolatry using all kinds of um, true, real seduction. And we have to recognize that that's constantly being foisted upon us. And we have to know that staying alive means saying, no, I'm going to connect to God Almighty. I'm not going after the seduction of the times, whether it is a, 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 an image, whether it's an actual human being, or whether it's an idea, idea of worshiping a data, worshiping science, and these kind of ideas. are That's what's taking people away from the source of their life, and we have to stay on track. So the ones that are still cleaving to God Almighty, those are the ones that are alive, and that's where the life comes from it comes from God Almighty through the Torah. Let's look at verse four, a uh, chapter four, verse six, and here, um, uh, Moses, our teacher, is telling us that when we guard the Torah and we do it, then it is our wisdom and it is our understanding in the eyes of the nations. It is a light unto the nations because the nations see, wow, these people are connected to God Almighty, 
And that is because we are listening. They see that we're listening to all God's decrees. And they're going to say, wow, only a wise nation and an understanding nation, this great nation, referring to the Jewish people, the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers, who've carried the Torah through all these times. And the only way that's possible to be able to um, carry that message is we have to stay true to the message. And here's the key. The key is that when we stay true to the message, we're going to see that we look and speak and talk differently than the rest of the nations. The proof is that they're saying, oh, wow, look at this nation that's so wise. If we were acting like the non-Jews that are going after the, the idolatrous practices and the false ideologies, then we would not be anything that they would point out. On the contrary, we see the fact that we're catching their attention for being different is because we are being different because we're staying with the Torah. Then that provides a compass that provides a spiritual compass and a spiritual backbone for humanity as a whole only when we stay in the straight and narrow course which is staying according to the Torah under all circumstances and not following after what everyone else is doing and Rashi says this so incredibly he says in verse uh, chapter four here following along we are looking at chapter four verse nine it says you have to be very, very careful. And he says, be very careful and be exceedingly guarded of your soul that you shouldn't forget this lesson, that your wisdom and your looking uh, uh, wise in the eyes of the nations comes from following the Torah. And Rashi says, if you try to follow the people that are lost and confused, then you'll end off looking like a fool. So we got to be careful not to use our cleverness and and the cleverness that God Almighty has given us a brain that can think, and then we're going to think and try to prove that our people should be following the, the descent of civilization. That doesn't look wise. It looks foolish. And even though you think you're going, you're going to be popular because you're following with the descent and the destruction of civilization, that doesn't engender respect. That a person just becomes a loudmouth parrot for the destruction of civilization. On the contrary, a Jew must stand up. And when I say a Jew, I mean also all the non-Jews that follow the teachings of the Torah. As God Almighty has commanded on Mount Sinai, that through Moses, our teacher, that every non-Jewish person must follow the teachings of the Torah that apply to the non-Jews. And this is absolutely essential. This is what the person's, how a person brings his divine uh, image that's in him to the forefront. A non-Jew must follow these words also and stand up proud and tall and say, no, the Torah says the Torah was given on Mount Sinai through Moses, the leader of the Jewish people, and he brought it down into the world for the Jewish people to be stewards of the Torah, to bring Torah and the knowledge of God Almighty to the entire world. And this is the way the world has to go. And everyone who's going and div diverting and descending will then have something to return to. Because that message, even if it's only one person still holding on to the true message, do not feel in any way any pressure to turn and become like everyone else. On the contrary, your backbone, your spiritual backbone and spiritual compass will become the spiritual compass and the spiritual backbone for everyone around you. And that's what your job is. So now we see over here that this verse, be very careful, exceedingly guard your soul. Like I said, chapter four verse nine was taken and misused by foreign ideologies that come to make war against the Torah, and make war against god and make uh, make war against humanity to try to justify destroying human relations destroying assemblies destroying prayer destroying communal learning destroying the the torah learning from generation to generation which is always done in person uh every day there's no day that's a break from learning Torah the proper funerals, proper weddings, and so forth. When they came to do that and they wanted to enclose themselves in the words of Torah, they used these verses. But they were misleading the people and, and we're responsible because we failed to look inside and say, one second, Rabbi, coming with the public health message, where does it say that? And it, does, it doesn't really mean that, what you're saying it means. Look over here, it says clearly, it's talking about be careful about be following the nations, following the, the foolish ideologies of the times. That's what it's saying. And the Cleocra tells us that the precedence is given. The greater care has to be given to guarding the soul. So that means if it's a choice between guarding the body or guarding the soul by keeping the 
young children and the older children and the adults continuing to assemble every day to learn Torah and to pray, to, that their souls should be strong, then you must give precedence, precedence to the soul and not to the body. The body is only in the service of the soul. So that was a critical mistake that people made, and everyone is responsible. Whoever listened to those instructions is responsible for violating the instructions here of the Torah. The Torah says clearly, stick to what God Almighty has said. He tells us to visit the sick. He tells us to um, have guests. He tells us to bury the dead in com with communal burials. He tells us to have communal weddings. He tells us to learn, uh, come and assemble and, and pray together. He tells us to come and learn together. This is God Almighty's instructions and no human being can come up unless you fall into the trap of becoming too clever for yourself, allowing someone to play with your mind and take verses and portions of verses, verses out of context and then teach things which actually go against God and against the Torah. So let's continue over here. Now we have, we've just done a four or nine. Let's go over here and take a look at uh, another verse that was taken out of context. And we have to connect to what its real meaning. Chapter four, verse 15. That was come taken and misused to say, oh, you have to be so careful to save your soul. You got to stay away from anything that could possibly be dangerous. But the verse is saying, stay away from all the threats to your connection to God Almighty. Stay away, away from the threats to your connection to the oneness of God Almighty. Let's finish the rest of the verse. Do not allow anyone to quote you any verse with just three words from a verse. If someone does that and tells you you have to conduct yourself based on three words, you have to say, where's the entire verse, Rabbi? And where's the entire chapter? Let's look at the entire verse and the entire chapter. And because I, my obligation is to take responsibility for the Torah and the well-being of the Torah, because my well-being, my life is dependent on it. Like we started, our very life and the life of every single human being is dependent on the th authenticity and the truth and keeping connected to the Torah. So don't come and tell me three words out of context. You have the burden of proof to show me where that verse is. And just because this is an example where they'll come along and they'll throw around verses and you feel self-conscious by, you know, well, I don't want to look like I'm ignorant that I don't know where this is. Everyone seems to be nodding their head and saying, yes, 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 yes. They seems to be part of, everyone seems to know what he's talking about. One second here. This is an attempt to undermine God's kingship in the world. It's an attempt to undermine the rulership of, the, of God Almighty in the world and take humanity off course. I have an obligation to put up my hand and say, excuse me, I'm not familiar with that teaching. Could you please tell me where that is found? Because we have to always turn back to the Torah, to the five books of Moses and to the prophets and say, where does it say it? Show me inside and give me some time. I'm going to take some time to read the entire verse, the entire chapter. I'm going to read it with the simple meaning of the verse. And if you can't prove to me that what you're suggesting we do is in keeping with the simple meaning of the verse, then you have the problem. Whoever is trying to get you to change, when I say you, I mean the person is trying to take you off track. Because whenever the Torah comes and we learn things from the Torah, and there's so many beautiful hints and beautiful secrets we can learn in the Torah, but they can never come to undermine the simple meaning of the verse. We always have to stay stick to the simple meaning of the verse. That's why we have to learn Chumash with Rashi. Every single human being has to learn the simple meaning of the verses, and the simple meaning is explained by Rashi. So we see over here, this verse is not telling us to guard our bodies. It's telling us to guard our souls that we should know that we did not see any images. We didn't see any ideologies. It was God Almighty who spoke to us on Mount Sinai. We don't follow the data. We don't follow the science. We don't follow the philosophy. We don't follow the history they teach us. We don't follow the literature. We don't follow the entertainment. We don't follow their whatever latest political ideologies they have. We only follow what we heard on Mount Sinai. And that's God Almighty spoke to us on Mount Sinai. That's what we need to guard ourselves from, from thinking that anything else is something that should be subscribed to. We don't subscribe to all their messaging and newsletters, however nice they present it and with the white coats and the big square hats with the tassels on the side and make all kinds of robes and occult symbolism to try to make it look like they have some sort of access to information, some sort of 
Secret knowledge. No, the only knowledge we need is included in the Torah, and the Torah is open and available for every single human being to come and learn it. And the Jewish people have the stewardship of it and the responsibility to know it inside and out, to be able to teach it to every human being with clarity and strength and, the, and, the, and, and a loving way to explain it so it's clear to every human being how they're supposed to conduct themselves. So let's go on. Now, in verse uh, chapter 4, the verse 19, we see over here that he says, maybe you, don't lift up your eyes and look at the sky and look at this big universe and start to ascribe power to all these forces in the universe, whether it's large stars and big planets or it's invisible particles in the air that you can't see that you're told that are dangerous to you and have these superpowers and can jump from person to person. That is just as much idolatry as believing that there's a star that can control your future and affect your life. You're ascribing power to things and then you're cowering in front of them. They become equally compelling to a person who's disconnected from God Almighty. But a Jew and a non-Jew who follows the Torah will never and should never be in any way moved by these things in the slightest. Let's move on. Chapter 4, verse 25. Take a look inside. This is, and you'll give birth to sons and, and, and sons and sons. And it talks about, God forbid, when we forget our connection to God Almighty, the really terrible things that happen. That's the Torah reading from the morning of Tisha B'Av. When we are mourning over the destruction of both the temples and all the other terrible tragedies that happened to the Jewish people and to humanity as a whole, all these human beings that went off track and, and, and descended to the level of becoming such unfortunate, uh, involved in such terrible, terrible atrocities. The, the right after this, Moses is warning us, Moses our teacher is warning us, if you go astray from what I'm warning you, or what I'm telling you lovingly to stay on track with, then the disaster is the destruction of everything you hold dear. We don't want to go there. We want to stay on track. We want to stay the ones that are cleaving to God Almighty, that we remain alive and all the goodness in the world stays alive and it increases and civilization increases and abundance increases. And the knowledge of God increases. Now, chapter 4, verse 35. Let's take a look. You have been shown to know that the Lord is God and there's nothing else besides him. That's it. End of story. Literally. Then we go on and we see verse chapter uh, 4, verse 39. Take, you need to know today and take into your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and the earth below, and there's nothing else. Ain Aid. That's the end of the story. Maisha Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, is telling us again and again and again and again. It's when you, when you learn this and that you will see and feel that there's nothing else besides God Almighty. You will have an intuitive sense. You will have common sense. Common sense is a gift from a God Almighty. Don't listen to all these people trying to try to take you off track. Whether they're trying to take you this way or that way, get you scared, think there's some people with certain powers, things in the air with certain powers, all these ascribing powers is part of the problem. We belong in the place of tranquility. Knowing that there's nothing besides God Almighty. That's where we belong because that's where we're created. No one could stop God Almighty's abundance. They may lock a flow of supplies chain on this particular train track or from this particular factory or however they do things to manipulate things in the world, but they can't stop God, God Almighty's abundance. The abundance will come from a different direction. The world is overflowing with abundance because it's God Almighty's loving creation that is going to sustain every single human being from this underpopulated world of 8 billion people till we get to 80 billion people and we grow from there from 80 billion people higher and higher now then we come to chapter 5 look inside chapter 5 verse 6 the 10 commandments are repeated and every single one of these 10 commandments applies to the non-jews except for guarding the shabbos which is something that's specifically a commandment for the Jewish people. But even with Shabbos, the non-Jew has an obligation to know that God Almighty created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. 
That's how he knows that there's nothing accidental in the world. He is not an accident. He is created intentionally on purpose, which is the refutation of the entire foundation of modern teachings in every single university class of everything in science. We do not follow the science because science teaches people that they're random creations. That's false. The Shabbos teaches us that every single human being, Jew and non-Jew, is here for a purpose. And he needs to know his purpose is just from the very fact that he was created by God Almighty. And when he knows that, he will uncouple himself from the spiraling despair, which is created intentionally by the enlightenment. The enlightenment is a mesmerizing light to try to get a person to spiral into deeper and deeper despair until he becomes totally stuck in the darkness of his own thinking. The person has to step out of that and say, no, the world was created in six days and God Almighty rested in the seventh. That's my, I need to know that I was created for a purpose. God Almighty has created me for a purpose and that is to be who I am, to bring goodness into the world, to follow God's commandments, to do good for other people, to do God good, to bring God Almighty's creation to fulfillment. Let's keep going. Chapter six, verse four. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, your God, the Lord is one. Let's see. What does that mean? That means that there's nothing, again, there's nothing besides God Almighty. Everywhere we look, it's part of God's oneness. All those people over there, you don't like them? It's part of God's oneness. That's the way God created the world. You don't like this over here? Whatever it is, the things you like, everything, all part of God, God's oneness. Now, the next verse says, and then you'll love the Lord your God. That's automatic. When you see that there's nothing besides God Almighty, you have no choice but to have an emotional reaction. Wow, God's creating me. Boom. That's automatic. But notice what Rashi says. So let's see, Rashi, we need to pause here for a moment. Verse 4. What does Rashi say? Hashem alokecham Hashem echad in verse 4. Hashem Shehu Elokeinu, God Almighty, who is our God, the God of the Jewish people, Atta, at this point in time. He's not the God of the idol idolaters because they're worshiping other forces in the world. In the future, he's going to become the one God, Lord, that he's going to be. Everyone's going to recognize him. I mean, he's already the one God, but everyone will recognize him as that. That then I, God Almighty says, I will uh, transition all the nations into one clear language to call, they will all call in the name of the Lord. That's what the future looks like. Everyone's going to know Lashon HaKadosh, the Holy Tongue. And I hope you'll check out at rabbismith.org slash shop. Rabbi Chirik is offering an incredible one-on-one -on -one tutoring where he's teaching human beings, anyone, Jew or non-Jew, who doesn't know how to read Hebrew, he's teaching how to learn the meaning of the shape and the way the mouth is formed for each one of the letters of the holy tongue. And then that gives a person the spiritual, connects him to the spiritual compass and gives him a spiritual backbone that he's then able to understand the meaning of the Hebrew words, the words in the Holy Tongue, and to understand what it means. And when we all understand the building blocks of creation, we all understand the very letters of what they mean in their essential meaning, then we'll understand how they combine to create words and what God is communicating through those words. And then we will all have a clear tongue and there'll be peace among us because we'll all know exactly what we're speaking about. We have a common language with common definitions of the terms because the definitions are not based on what the dictionary says. The de definitions are based on the letters from which the word is constructed, from which the word is composed. That carries its definition of what it really means. So then Rashi continues, and it says, on that day, it will be the Lord will be one and his name will be one. So that's what Shema Yisrael is, uh, is this verse, chapter 6, verse 4. And the Chida, the great Chida, great rabbi, said to a non-Jew after testing him to make sure that he was sincere in abandoning idolatry and wanting to cleave only to the Lord, God Almighty, the God of Israel, he told him, 
that he should stay away from any form of worshiping, any form of partnerships or allowing any other foreign thoughts coming into his conception of the simple unity of God Almighty, and that he should cleave only to the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel. And he said, say this verse, chapter 6, verse 4, every morning and every night, twice a day. That's brought down by the Lubavitcher Rebbe as Maisarov, as an ex how this rabbi conducted himself in being a light into the nations, instructing a human being who wants to cleave to God Almighty. And that is the instruction for a human being who is committed to following the instructions of this Torah portion, following the instructions of the Torah, and abandoning any form of idolatries and mixtures and, 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 uh, and compounds, and instead only worshiping God Almighty. Then the Torah continues, verse uh, chapter 6, verse 12, and says over here, you should be very careful that you shouldn't forget these things, that God Almighty took you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of slavery. Remember where he's taken out of you. Don't forget these things. Then verse 13, fear only God Almighty and serve only him. Then let's move on to chapter 7. And of course, every verse in between, I'm, I'm, you need to learn these. You need to look inside yourself. Spend the time. Understand the Torah portion. Chapter 7, verse 7 says over here, remember, says Moses, not because you are the most numerous of the nations did God Almighty desire you, but rather he chose you because you are the least among the nations. Our contribution as the stewards of the Torah, carrying it through all the generations, to be that it should remain preserved and untouched and unmodified is because we will be the few who will be the ones carrying it. And while, whenever we and say, where is the truth? They're going to turn to the Jew who's carrying the Torah and has not allowed it to be modified. He's rejected all the attempts to come up with modern interpretations and attempts to justify all the enlightenment teachings, God forbid. And he will be left and has remained with the words of the Torah. That is why God Almighty chose us. So don't look to be the the biggest and the most popular. It's about the quality of the Torah that we're carrying and the purity of it, that that's what changes the world. And then to conclude over here, chapter seven, verse nine, know that God Almighty, he is the one who's faithful to, to fulfill the covenant, the covenant that he has with the Jewish people. And he has a covenant with the Jewish people because he's chosen the Jewish people to be able to be truthful to this message and to carry it through in all times and all circumstances, no matter, even at the pain of death, no, nothing has shifted or changed us from that. And on the contrary, we are extremely motivated and extremely enthusiastic to bring this message to every single human being, because that is why we're here. And that's what the message for the world is. That's what God intentions, God's God Almighty's intention is every single human being will receive this message. And so we must keep our part also, which we are keeping our part. And Mir Tzashem, you will, this will take all of us into the Haftar of God Almighty's comforting, comforting us in the pain of exile that we see the suffering that's going on in the world. And we have to know that God is comforting us and every single human being to say, I will help you transcend all the ways in which your thinking has gone astray and all the way in which your speech has gone astray and all the ways in which your actions have gone astray, I am going to comfort you and I'm going to return you to your true grounding in what is real, which is that there's nothing besides God Almighty. And you know that innately already. And there's nothing that could stop you from that. Ignore all the thinking inside of ourselves that tries to tell us the despairing thoughts and all the, the enlightenment teachings around us that looks, people look so proud and wise with their despairing thoughts and their proofs of darkness. But that is why we have the Torah. We have the Torah because the Torah is the light unto the nations. And that's why we have to make sure that light is shining in every place and every corner, that there's no corner, there's no human being, there's no thought left in the world, in existence that is not permeated by the Torah. That we think and are the thoughts that we allow ourselves to entertain, the thoughts that we allow ourselves to 
focus on our thoughts of truth and thoughts of the truth of the oneness of God Almighty, that is what brings the clarity to every single human being. That is what brings the joy to every single human being. That's what brings the spreading hope and the spreading joy that spreads to every single human being, from one person to his family, to his community, to his nations, to the whole world. And that is something that will instantaneously transform the entire world. So God willing, each one of you, please take this video, make sure to share with at least one person. Make sure to sh sign up at rabbismith.org. Make sure to subscribe below and let's keep the message going and reach every single one of these 8 billion people. And we will know we're successful when we have 80 billion people. We know, we're gonna know we're successful because Mashiach is coming and God Almighty is gonna rebuild the holy temple and the holy city and the holy land. And that's gonna be a base my house basically based is going to be a house of prayer for all the nations of the world and God willing we should experience that now which means to say that God Almighty should allow this transformation in each one of us and in the world as a whole to happen through loving kindness and through compassion and with great joy should be an amazingly incredible experience and transformation for each one of us and for the world as a whole. Good Shabbos. God bless you all.